welcome back to the bible chat welcome back it's a different environment it's a different environment there's always been a different background a different something but it's always been in the same place but i thought let me take it somewhere completely different and completely different environment and take it outside we in the sun i don't know how much of this will last summer is nearing to the end i'm surprised it's not over i think you know the sun has come out for a bit so let's take advantage of it so today we're just gonna talk we're just gonna flow i don't know if you guys have noticed but i've been gone for a while i've been gone for a minute um the consistency hasn't been consistency it hasn't been consistent at all but I, I was deep in like no one has checked for the bible chat no one has said oh i miss the bible chat like when are you gonna be back when are we gonna talk my my fellow loves like my lovers in christ no one has been like we've missed you like we've, we've been wanting to hear a word from you sis so i'm like are y'all enjoying this <laughs> so i ain't gonna give up i'm still gonna take that step of faith i'm still going to i'm still gonna come and show up for you guys um what does my wallpaper say it says for we walk by faith and not by sight second corinthians 5 verse 7 so that's what i'm doing even though it doesn't seem like um the bible chat is valuable there's any value in it there's any point in it right now i mean it's not like there's zero views it's not like there's zero likes but i don't even count it in that way i count it in the lives that are changed and the souls that are impacted but there could be always more there can be more there can be more glory and all i want to see in all things that i do is the docs are the beauty of the lord god is so beautiful so if i'm not doing any if if what i'm doing i don't see the beauty of god then i'm i'm a bit weary but i know that god loves something to be started he loves when something is the, there's a the beginning of something it shows that there's faith there's trust in him that i'm aware that his hand is sticking out and reaching out to me so over i think there's a web on my camera how did that happen is that am i bugging mm. okay so today really we're just gonna chat as we do but today's gonna be a bit different because usually i come with like a topic and this is the bible chat the bible chat is where we just talk about any anything that happens or occurs in life we started with boldness so maybe a way in which we're trying to follow in this life or a circumstance that's happening or any ideas anything that comes to mind anything that the, that god has been speaking to me in the season that i'm in and there's even a video yet to come out on seasons which is is literally my life my life is based on seasons our, all of our lives are based on seasons so i think that's one that i love so much but the for it to come out there's been hindrances but it shall come out in the name of jesus so yeah just want to chat and this time like when it comes to relationships which i like to re- base everything on because i feel like re- relationships reflect a lot about what god even requires from us and we can see god's hand in our lives and how he moves through relationships really so in terms of relationships you you know with my friend let's say for example my best friend that i just did my bible study with we come we have a lot of discussions and most of the time we just flow like whatever comes it comes or sometimes we actually have like something that we want to talk to each other about like or a catch-up so lately i've been doing catch-ups with you guys like something i want to talk to you guys about but today there's nothing specific i'll I'll just speak to you about different things as the holy spirit leads we will talk about so one thing even in terms of one thing I, i mentioned during our chat me and my friend our bible study just now i mentioned desires i mentioned be more like jesus and i want to share this verse with you guys this was my quiet time this morning the verse that i looked at during the time i spent with god this morning so it's good to spend time with god in the morning guys i just i really can't i cannot not spend time with god in the morning it really it irks me and i think one thing i also mentioned to my friend was us knowing that yeah there's there's a web on my camera is literally floating around me like why are you there why are you there why are you there 
but spending time with god in the morning is something i cannot miss and we spoke a lot about helping ourselves i think that's the key thing that i will get at and mention is helping ourselves like we know we know what will help us we know what is like the best decision to take in terms of in light of god i'm not talking about making decisions for ourselves i'm talking about in light of god in terms of what god wants us to do like we know like we know we know so in terms of spending time with god in the morning and the practicality of it happening let's say oh you have work starting at 9 a.m you know the basic nine to five you wake up at eight and you're thinking oh Work is just there, 30 minutes away, but you want to spend time with God. You want to eat, you want to get ready. So you wake up, you get ready now. It's now um, 8.30. And then you want to eat. But time with God. And let's say you even... Okay, let me... Let's skip the breakfast then. Because I really want to spend time with God. But you only have 30 minutes to do that. And that's rushed. We have to be practical. We need to make things make sense for ourselves. So when it comes to like me saying, oh, I want to spend longer times with God, I know that's how my relationship with him will even, will even grow. Then I know that I need to sacrifice sleep. I know that I, I need to be disciplined in even the time that I sleep. So it's basically about just helping ourselves. Like we can't mock God. God, God cannot be mocked. He cannot be mocked. Like we know and we know and we know that some things are just not going to make sense if we do some things at a certain time or if we don't do certain things. So we need to help ourselves out as Christians as well. Like, we spoke a lot about the heart. So meditation, even the things that we spoke about during our Bible study, it was too good. And it's always good. At first, um, we start with a verse that kind of threw us off because we looked at the content and it wasn't, like, really what we were trying to get at. But god always he shows up throughout our bible studies all the time as you've seen if you've seen on the channel if you haven't watched our bible study in spain what are you guys doing what are you doing you need to watch it you need to watch the previous videos every video on my channel you should you you should watch um because god is definitely a part and yeah that's all to say spend time with god in the mornings guys and if it's not really happening the way you want it to if it's not fruitful and whatnot there's always measures you can take and you know deep down the measures that need to be taken ask jesus christ for the grace because the grace comes from him so J- john 5 verse 30 is the one i want to read to you guys i'll read it in kj view for the um the first bit I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Amen, hallelujah, amen. So, where I am in life is wanting to do the will of the Father, based on his word, based on the Spirit's leading. And that was Jesus. His meat was to do the will of him that sent him. That was his satisfaction. And I want that to be me so much, because... I realize how much when I'm doing things that let's say is purely based on trying to please others or trying to go in a way where I feel like it's best, it feels so burdensome. It feels like, why am I doing this? Because Jesus literally says in Matthew 11 verse 28, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you, I'll give you rest. So why am I agitated? Why am I struggling so much and there's things that you know in life are it's not flowing it's not working and you know it's because you're in a place out of the will of god you're not in god's will i'm not i was like i haven't been in god's will in the way i should be so i've taken a step back and i'm like (sighs) guys if you don't know about first love conversations it's a podcast now on youtube where my past my pastor and a few other members of the church they're speaking on different topics and the recent they've been such blessings to me but the recent one that they posted such a blessing it was about politics um love and the will of god and the part at the end to do the will of god it really like resonated with me and lately when i've been hearing my pastors preach about the will of god it's really resonated with me it's really convicted me and it's really stirred me up and it's basically to say god's will was so good like why am i trying to go my way and like i was telling my friend again 
Romans 12 2, we have to renew our minds because we've come in with such carnal thoughts, such worldly thoughts, and holding on to things that, like God says, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we've come into things trying to be Christians and trying to follow God. You're... Amos 3.3, 3. I'm spitting out scriptures right now because the word is so true. How can two work, walk together except they be agreed? How can you walk with Jesus? How can you follow Jesus? And I always say this, to be a Christian is to be a follower of, follower of Christ. How can you be a follower of someone you don't agree with? You don't agree with his ways. It's not going to work. You're going to be trying to go your, your own way. And we're meant to be the sheep of his pasture. We're meant to be followers of the good shepherd. And again, I said, the will of God is good. He is a good shepherd. So we need to follow that good shepherd. He's, he's leading us to still waters, to lay down on green pastures. And this is preaching to myself, like, Christabel, like, God wants the best for you. But in our defense, which is, is no excuse, really, there's hope. We need to change. So in our defense, it's like we've carried on so much. And I'm so much one for, what's it called? You can be saved. Oh, yeah. Yippee. Thank Jesus for salvation. We can be saved, but we still need to be delivered. We still need to... We still need to give God everything. Everything that we have accumulated in the past. Everything that has stuck onto us. Because those things, they stick. Like, because the enemy knows that God wants us. It's a battle between him and like God and the enemy. He knows how much God wants us. So he's going to make sure in our life without him that he has... Um, he has just filled us with so much junk. He wants us to be filled with so much junk, so much trouble, so much anxiety, so much depression, so much hurt, so much pain, so much trauma. So that when it comes to even thinking about living for Jesus, it's it's hard. But there is hope in Jesus Christ. Jesus has already won the victory. So we literally needed to also help ourselves and renew our minds and let those things go. Those limiting beliefs. Oh, the limiting beliefs. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Because I realize, and this is like transparency, one thing that after other things that I've struggled with, the whole idea of daydreaming, mainly i know a lot of girls can relate because i've watched videos on it as well and i thought i was the only one you know when you'd be thinking you're the only one but you're really not but thinking about marriage and being with a guy and all these things and just daydreaming about what could be fantasies and whatnot and it's it's really it's really not good and why i say I've seen it to be a limiting belief because I was talking to God about this last week about about the whole idea of it and asking for forgiveness that I even did that and how I'm trying to move past that literally like walk away from that completely and it occurred to me that let's say all these things that I've thought about all these things that I've imagined come my marriage God forbid, though, come my marriage, though, and all these things that I've thought about, let's say it doesn't happen. I'm 11 times out of 10, it won't. And I've thought, thought about the small things. Let's say even the way I've imagined my house to be. Because a lot of times when I've daydreamed, daydream, it's been like specific things and usually the same patterns. So I've hold, held on to such strong patterns of the way things should be. And let's say this thing doesn't happen now. It's limiting beliefs. Ephesians 3.20 20. Now unto him he was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think of him. I've limited myself by imagining these things that are just... It's the bare minimum. It's, God can literally do so much more so why have i thought in such extreme ways in such constant regular ways that have limited me in in my belief like literally another verse about all what we should think about think about the things that are true philippians 4 verse 8 
so it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things so the word of god is laced with such things truth just purity so why not think on these things then even like my our bishop he keeps saying on heaven think about heaven like we don't think about heaven mother we're thinking about our wedding how it's gonna be and all these things that they're not the, the doctor isn't truly in those things the wedding ceremony rather than the marriage the institution that god has built so that there can be commitment so that it can reflect the we can reflect christ and his bride that's what where the beauty truly is so we're missing the beauty in things we're missing the the glory in things when we're not when we're not meditating on the right things so i don't know how i got into manipulative dreaming i'm saying it fast i can somehow get the word out but hopefully that's the way it said but i'll try find the word as well but i was basically speaking about desires guys and how jesus his desire was to do the will of him that sent him. And I really want that to be me. Even though it be hard. Because of, yeah, like I said, all the things that I've brought on. But it's the best way that we can follow, you know. Having the right desires. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, one thing, like I said, being like Jesus. I... I've always thought that, okay, that's the highest thing. That's the best thing. That's what I need to do by the Holy Spirit is how I've realized I can even attain to that. You know, I w- you always see, oh, Jesus walked on water. Jesus turned water into wine. Oh, that's far-fetched. It's not. God said in the last days he will pour his spirit on the son- sons and the daughters. I believe I'm the daughter. I believe it, it can be me. And with the Holy Spirit, he's one for obedience. Like, you have to actually want him. You actually have to wait on him. Take the upper room. Take the day of Pentecost. You have to wait on him. He wants to be wanted. And he's he's literally the best thing. The best thing that we can have to attain to the... What's that word? The righteousness. So we can have that righteousness in Christ because our righteousness is filthy rags. But with God, the beauty in us is seen through Jesus Christ. So there's no point even trying to do anything. And I've I've thought a lot about how atheists say, oh, as long as I'm a good person, I'll get into heaven. Pfft, heaven? Oh, me. Do you know what I do? But they're not good. No one is good on this earth without Jesus Christ. No one. You can do the a million, give to millions to charities. You can do random acts of kindness. You can try with all your might to be good. But the sin, the things that separate you from God is what would not, it will, it will guarantee that you will just not be in heaven with him. Like why would God want to be with someone that doesn't want him? You know? We we barely want to be in the same spaces as people that doesn't want don't want us around. A lot of people I've seen, they don't honor invitations. No, they don't go to places where they haven't been invited to. Like we haven't been invited. Well, no, we we've, we've been invited, but we've declined the invitation. So why would that person even want you there, at their space? But anyway. Anyway, anyway, yes, attaining to the life of Jesus Christ is is the main thing. So how did Jesus live? What would Jesus do? All those kind of questions. And I feel that's literally the best thing. The best thing I can even do, like even with this, how can I be the person that you see Jesus as you're watching this video, as you're listening, like all that I'm saying and Maybe sometimes my view is like a bit distorted and it's hard to even see what will Jesus do because of the way things are. Like, Jesus weren't on no social media. So I'm like, mm, is this what you're, I'm meant to be doing kind of thing? 
but I feel at the same time you've definitely be give, been given such great resources and maybe sometimes so much to our disposal that we don't know what to do with it but there's definitely great things that can be done through this this platform using your voice and by the grace of god reaching the people that needs to be reached so yeah that's just a bit about being like jesus because i heard a snippet of something that jackie hill perry said about oh just in paraphrasing in terms of how as, as christians we glory in the fact that oh I say I spend time with God and oh, I'm close to God. My relationship with God is this. So I'm holier than thou kind of thing. All that kind of sense of things. But really your character stinks. Just in that sense. I don't really... If I'm paraphrasing, that was a big paraphrase. Because I didn't really listen to it. But I just could sense like... Yeah, that's resonated with something that I've thought of. Like truly, this is this is serious. In terms of myself, looking inwardly, which is what we should do, guys. We need to look inwardly. Um, as for me, I just love my relationship with God. Like, it's, it's, I feel like I'm growing. I'm definitely getting, I don't want to say closer, because there's never an uh, end to all this. It's a journey. I'm getting deeper. I'm get. I'm reaching certain places that, you know, looking back, and I always like to reflect and, you know, even, you know, give myself a clap, a hand clap. You know, last year, was I here? No. Like, you know, say the the times I'm, the amount of times I'm spending with God, it's, it's definitely improved. But there's so much more to it. There's so much more to it. The ability to bring God glory through our lives is so much, so much, there's so much importance in that. Just in the sense of we are one person. And in terms of soul winning as well, we are one person. But there's so much more other people that God wants to reach. How did God even gather those 99 that he left the, the one? Because he's always caring about the other, the other person. So it's a, it's a thing for us as well to care about. God wants to be glorified. We were created for his glory. So how can my life glorify him? My character my patience being a salt on the earth being a light to the world let me read some passages on that (sighs) matthew 5 verse 13 to 16 you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for nothing it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. 15. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's why we are good, guys. So anyone that wants to be good outside of Jesus Christ is is in vain. Like, there's no reason for being good apart from bringing glory to God. Because he is the good in us. Jesus is the good in us. Jesus is the only one that lived a sinless life. So he's the good. So in terms of... In terms of how our ability is to be patient. To live amicably with people. To love people. That's something that the world is lacking. That's why we're the salt, because the salt is a preservative. In this world, this it's full of corruption. So it's literally decaying because people are bringing their toxicity, their bad ways of doing things. These good people, these worldly people that are good, but they're bringing so much bad into the world by their gossip, how they slander people. But we're told so much against that through the Bible. Paul, oh, I'm sure he was tired. He's repeating himself about like how we're meant to be with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, even let alone with the world. But he says that our conversations should be filled with grace to the non-believers as well. So there's so much ways in which we're meant to be. So much ways in which it's not easy to be. But that's so important. Our character, 
our character our character our character so i just want us to think think about our character as it's not easy i know i know when i know when i know to be i don't even want to use the word kind i feel like it's overused because we need an understanding of these words especially if they're in the bible because it's in the bible so it's important yes but let's say to be at peace with others to and I, i keep going back to the word patience to be patient guys so take your time with people and people aren't showing up the way you want them to in the amount of time that you want them to fast like i need my answer now i need you to come through now like i was in an event and we were lit- simply waiting for the event to start and the artist was doing sound check yeah and i'm just hearing people like just complaining like oh i'm not good at patience i'm such an impatient person as a christian that shouldn't be something that you're proud to say i'm so impatient oh when's this gonna start it's been for hours like all these kind of things like bear in mind that's a fellow christian that you're speaking about and you're being imp- like impatient with you know and lo and behold the event the presence was there so whatever needed to happen it needed to happen and it happened so but on our side were we who god desired for us to be let's say an unbeliever even showed up that day because their friend invited them how would our conversation be to them what example does that show to them you know we're always an example and whether we like it or not people are watching us they're always watching us and that's such a hard thing for me because my thing is i just let me be how i want to i want to be like i want to smile right now i want to just i want to i'm going somewhere like my thing which is a bad thing for me i'm always like i have somewhere to be i have places to be i have things to do um so however people think i'm sorry not right now but literally every moment every opportunity there's always an opportunity for god to work in our lives work through us as long as i as we're on this earth that's why we're still alive guys if you don't know but yeah there's a lot there's a lot that we need to do there's a lot that we need to even reflect on and say i know i know better even flowing from that I guess I will talk about perfection and how that even relates to what I just mentioned is Jesus the perfection of Jesus Christ the better that we are meant to even step into you the better ways in which we're meant to walk in is because God is perfect so we are meant to be perfect that's the scripture yeah so all these things all the the better attitudes that we're meant to even walk in the ways in which we're meant to be that god has called us to is because of a per- perfection that's the perfect way and in the past before jc before giving my life to christ perfection was something that i really i really wanted to attain to I really wanted to be perfect in all I did kind of thing. And obviously, outside of Christ, what's the point? Like, that. full stop. There's nothing more I can say about that. But now, being in Christ, and even seeing that such a verse, for someone that was a perfectionist, I'm like, so I'm meant to be perfect again? Um, I thought that was a bad thing. But no, it's the way we do things. Like, the things... There's a book I've been reading, Counterfeit Gods. There's things that we idolize and they're not bad things but it's because we've idolized it now it's bad the situation is bad money is not bad but we've idolized it marriage is not bad but we've idolized it we've put it above god the giver if even those things god gives the power to make god gives the power to be wealthy you know all these things god created marriage but now perfection if i'm trying to be perfect outside of christ the one who is perfect like i'm saying again doing good outside of christ the one who is good 
I'm making a fool of myself because it's filthy to God. It's the, that kind of righteousness is filthy rags. So this perfection is something that I'm trying to walk in again because I look at like as we know, if we know, I hope we know. I'm an artist, and I'm really just trying to learn from other artists rather than comparing myself and seeing oh um i'm nothing compared to them i I don't think i'm cool to this you know (laughs) my voice compared to their voice nothing i've yeah i've got nothing on them like no it's it's not gonna work me look at them yeah god Mm, i'm not sure but rather than doing all of that Loving the fact that there's transparency. Loving the fact that there's hope. There's a, it's a journey. Everyone starts from somewhere. So I will get there by the grace of God. So now, learning from them. Trying to see where they started. How they got to where they are now. So I'm seeing such perfection. I'm seeing such excellence. And I know for a well while that they didn't always get there. They didn't get here there overnight. But the perfection it's it's admirable it's very admirable like god is god deserves perfection in what we are doing you see how people in the world celebrities they're doing so well you see how there's there's the glam there's the glitz the glam the the i don't say glory no that's for, that's reserved for god but there's a glitz the glam there's all this these good things there's all just especially as well let's say in the music sense not being an independent artist and actually having a record label that's a different thing in itself so all that extra help too and a lot of christians we struggle the money oh it's not really there but we are to be rich we are to be rich in god if that's the will of god for our lives so it's not that oh we should be poor as christians paul said he was he was up he was abased he was up he was down he was different places he was at different points and we can always have that richness we can always have that goodness in in the space of it being the will of god so i've always had that assurance that there will be that in my life I will attain to perfection. And more and more, I'm learning that it's, it's by learning. It's through learning. So we need to learn so that we will reach the perfection. If God has called you to that perfection, and I believe we are because the Bible says so. Be perfect as your God is perfect. As, like, so we have to be perfect. We have to have that beauty inside what we're doing. And I think I'll name this doctor. I'll name this beauty. I believe um, doxa is the Greek word of beauty. So we are to attain to that. We are to attain to perfection. We are to attain to things being orderly. May all things, all things should be done in an orderly manner. God is that. Look, if you look at the world, if you look at the world around you, and disclaimer for anyone that has this question of what happens to people who have never heard of the word or never will hear of the word will they go to heaven or will they go to hell they've seen god god has said it in his word through creation he they've seen the hand of god they see that god has ex- exists but they've ignored that so they've they've ignored god anyone that doesn't have ha- has said that they haven't heard of jesus jesus was there present when the earth was created so he's part of this creation so they cannot say that they have not known of god but anyway, that was just that. But just look at the earth around you. It's like, God is such a perfect God. Like, beauty. Like, it's all around. So, so much things can be better. Let's take our time with things. And like my friend mentioned as well about rushing. Let's not rush. Let's take our time. Let's let's make sure things are, are done beautifully. Let's make sure things are... Oh, bird poo. Let's, let's make sure things are well thought out planned done with preparation done with god praying about it being prayerful allowing the the holy spirit to be a part because he's a creator he's an advocate he's a comforter he's a helper because i'm talking about okay let's say music 
or I can take my time to make sure that my harmonies are prepared before I go into the studio. I can make sure I take my time to maybe look at the words that I've written. Is there anything that, you know, is out of place or it doesn't make sense? Not just write song for writing song's sake. And like if you make content, for example, making sure the lighting is nice, you know, at least give it some, some I don't know, some care. You know, because people in the world, they really try because, you know, their motivation is money and it's a big motivation for a lot of people. But our motivation is God pleasing God and glorifying him. But we should care enough about glorifying God to even make such things the way that God wants it to be. So, yeah, there's so many things. Writing a CV for a job and getting into something that God has called you to do. There needs to be even research done a certain level of understanding for such things to be perfect so yeah i think that's about it you know i hope you guys have enjoyed this chat i hope you've learned something i hope you've been blessed i hope that you love god more and yeah just attain to the the calling of god upon your life take time take time take time to hear from him go back and Remind yourself of the thing. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of the things that God has spoken to you before to do. And by the grace of God, you will be blessed because He will give you grace to obey Him, which is so important. But well, that's me, guys. That's been the Bible chat. That's me, guys, and that's been the Bible chat. I keep forgetting that this is basically a mic. So that's me, guys. Loud and clear. This has been the Bible Chat. Tune in. Be thinking, when's the next video coming out? Yes, please. Uh, care about us over here. Because we want to talk. I don't know which way this is going to try to relax again. But it's a way. It's a way. It's a way. Conversation adjourned.